We have Dinesh from the Kent Standard PMC talking about the Spark Bulk Analytics now. So he's going to give an overview of what's happening with the CEP 28. Um, the goal is to increase the speed at which Spark jobs can read and write data to and from Cassandra. Um, so we'll have Dinesh dive into that. And uh, without further ado, do we have Dinesh on here? Yes, you have. Okay. Hey, Dinesh, how are you? <laughs> hey, hi, Melissa. Um, uh, I'm Dinesh Joshi. I'm, I, like uh, Melissa said, I'm a Cassandra Commuter and PMC member. I'm also an engineering manager at Apple working on Cassandra. So uh, today I'm going to talk very briefly about CEP28, um, and what its goals are, and the basic architecture of uh, the C, uh, of the solution that we have contributed to Cassandra and what we are doing with it uh, at the moment. So uh, a little bit of history on the CEP itself. Um, so um, Cassandra community um, didn't really have a process uh, in the past to uh, make big architectural changes. And uh, we we proposed something called as the Cassandra Sidecar uh, several years ago, and uh, that led to the uh, creation of the whole CEP process um, where we were able to make some uh, major architectural conversations and changes. Uh, but the Sidecar uh, as a project uh, had a very few uh, use cases um, uh, for, for uh, a long time and until now, uh, we didn't uh, really have a major use case. So that's what's uh, very exciting about the CEP as well. Uh, with that said, uh, the problem that we are trying to solve is uh, as Cassandra is uh, linearly scalable as a database, the size of the data that we are dealing with is increasing um, and, and the massive quantities of data that we have uh, it needs, needs to be either ingested or analyzed in a data pipelines for various reasons like machine learning uh, or just uh, simple reporting. Uh, so uh, Cassandra and Spark were traditionally paired together. Um, and in the past, um, it has worked very well for small to medium sized data, uh, but Cassandra can grow uh, fairly large uh, and the data can grow, grow fairly large. And so uh, we had to figure out a way to um, extract data out of Cassandra uh, at a much larger scale uh, than what, what was possible using just the native CQL protocol. Um, and so that led to the creation of this bulk analytics project. Um, and um, what, what we bring in CEP28 is the, uh, the core infrastructure that is required for um, anybody to read data out of Cassandra or push data into Cassandra at an SS table uh, level. Uh, what it means is we skip the native protocol and essentially uh, read uh, the SS tables directly out of uh, Cassandra. Uh, and the interpretation of the SS tables actually happens on the Spark side instead of the um, you know Cassandra server interpreting it, serializing the data, and then putting it up on the wire. We are actually just scooping out all the SS tables. And uh, on the Spark side, we create a, a data frame that um, basically uses those SS tables. So a lot of the read path that Cassandra does is externalized as part of this project um, into the Spark um, analytics, uh, Cassandra analytics library um, on the read side. Um, on the right side, we take uh, a, a existing data frame. So you can uh, create a data frame in Spark and a data frame is uh, essentially the data side that you would like to push inside Cassandra. And what we do is we take all of that uh, data, uh, shuffle it based on the uh, Cassandra's, um, uh, the Cassandra's um, ring, token ring, and uh, we create SS tables that land on each of the individual nodes. Um, and because of this, uh, what we do is uh, we go by the sidecar uh, route rather than the actual Cassandra daemon. And the CP has a lot of uh, architectural uh, uh, information on why why we do that, uh, why, why not directly land data into Cassandra using the Cassandra daemon itself. Um, and, uh, you know, isolation is one of the biggest uh, uh, important things. Um, and then the other thing is we, we are able to saturate a lot of bandwidth. Um, and so uh, the JVM is not really great at creating these uh, resource isolation for the CPU 
or uh, memory or even um, the network. And so uh, the garbage collection um, is also something that we are very concerned about, so which will impact your read write path. So the, the CEP brings uh, all of this together. Um, I, I'll drop a link in the chat and, and you can read it further. Uh, the main thing is like we are able to extract data out of Cassandra or push data into Cassandra without meaningfully impacting the read write path of the database itself um, and uh, still maintain a consistent view of the data site that exists in Cassandra. And that's basically the uh, the foundational um, you know architecture of Cassandra, which uses uh, LSM trees uh, that allows us to uh, do, do all of these cool things uh, on the sidecar. So um, we have a demo example in the repository. Uh, if you'd like, you can uh, run um, uh, run the demo and uh, you can see uh, uh, a three node cluster being spun up on your local machine uh, using CCM. And then you can actually run a Spark job that reads data into Cassandra or writes data, um, um, writes data out of Cassandra, uh, reads data out of Cassandra, writes data into Cassandra uh, directly at the SS table level. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, looking forward to additional contributions um, for this project. And um, the, the great thing about this is that it introduces general purpose APIs inside the sidecar that allows you to uh, scoop data in and out of Cassandra. You are not necessarily tied to Spark. So if somebody would like to uh, build something similar for another system, you know, in order to integrate this as a standalone tool without using Spark, you, you can do that using a REST APIs that are present in the in the sidecar. Uh, so there isn't um, any requirement that you use uh, the uh, existing um, uh, Spark, uh, Spark Analytics uh, library that we have contributed in the Cassandra community. So uh, that's pretty much it from my end. Um, thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. If you want to get involved in the project, there are many different ways to participate. You heard about some of them here. Of course, join the Cassandra Slack on ASF. Look at the Cassandra Apache website um, and find out how you can start to contribute. The CEPs are a great way to get involved. The contributor meetings are where we talk about those different CEPs, and we'll talk about how you can contribute there. You can also submit a talk for this town hall, as well as other events that we're doing. Um, there is a form in the town hall agenda uh, that that's you can submit kind of tell us what you want to talk about. What are the topics you can um, speak, uh, share your expertise about? Let us know. And if you want to organize a local meetup, there's a handbook um, link in the agenda as well. Um, and you can also join the Planet Cassandra Discord. Uh, we hope that you join us for the next town hall. If you have any questions for any presenters, you can find them on ASF Slack, various other channels, and we will see you again soon. Thanks everybody for joining.